Come and put your hands together to the Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord that I am, that I am, that I am, the glorious one, the wondrous one, the one who is and the one who is to come, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who gave us the ability this morning to be awake. The one who brought us from our houses down to this place this morning. We exalt you, O Lord. We exalt you, O Lord. We glorify your holy name this morning, Lord. Father, come this morning, O Lord, and take your place. In the name of Jesus. We exalt you, Father. I just want you this morning to say one thing to God this morning. You can say it in your heart. You can say it out loud. But tell God one thing you want him to do for you this morning. Because this morning, the I am that I am is in his presence. You may have come from your house without anything you want from God. You may have come from your house not thinking of anything. You may have come because today is Sunday. You may have dabbled into the channel this morning because it's a Sunday. You don't know what to do. But this morning, I want you to tell God one thing. One thing alone you want from him this morning. And before you say that, I want you to look into your heart And prepare your heart for that wanting to be made manifest in your life. Father, we exalt you this morning. Father, we know that without you, we are nothing. Father, the Bible said, and God said, let us make man in our own image. And when God finished creating man from the dust, he breaks into him. He borrowed man breath. And we're here this morning standing with the breath that God has given us. And with this breath, we want to praise your holy name. With this breath, we want to glorify your holy name. Be thou exalted, O Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Let us be seated. This morning, we'll be looking at it is not like a topic, but we'll be looking at the Simon inside of you. The Simon inside of you. If you want, you can make it personal. The Simon inside of me. If you open your Bible with me to Luke chapter 5, we're going to read Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11. I know this is a story that we already know. And one of the things I learned this week is that we look at the Bible as Christians. We read the Bible as Christians. And as Christians, we, only, we already know the story because we've been taught the story. But I learned this the Bible from the perspective of these are the life that we are examining. So if your life was written in the Bible, if your life was mirrored in the Bible for everyone throughout the whole world, throughout the whole generations to read, how will it be? So when you're looking at the Bible, look at the Bible from the perspective, put yourself into the Bible as you're reading it so that it will make more meaning to you, so that you'll be able to be open into most of the mysteries, all of the mysteries by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we look at Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to pull out a little from the land. 
and he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and lay down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toyed all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will lay down the nets. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled the boats, filled both the boats. So they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they have taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when he had brought the boat to land, they forsook all and followed him. Amen. You know, one thing is that God knows what you need. But he always starts from where you are. And this morning, we, are, we, we will see that God wants to upgrade our problems. Simon had his boat. He's a trained fisherman. He has toyed all night. But God decided, Jesus decided that morning to upgrade his problems. So from now on, what we'll be doing is to stop praying for our problems to go away. We should be asking God to upgrade our problems to high quality problems. When I mean problems, if God wants to give you upgraded version of whatever you're doing, if you can call it problem, you can call it work, you can call it anything. One question you should ask yourself is, do you want empty nets? Do you want to be toiling all day, all night? Or do you want sinking boats? I, I know everybody's answer will be, I want that sinking boat. So he's ready to upgrade your problems to high quality problems. So by simply saying yes to Jesus, Simon finds himself, he, did not, he never had an idea what he was getting into. This is the man who was by the wayside washing his nets, and suddenly somebody gets into your boat and tells you to, let's, let's move. And how did Jesus choose that boat? Of all the boats at the shore, it was his boat that Jesus cho chose. Jesus decided to change his name because he was Simon. But before then, Peter, who Jesus changed, Simon, who Jesus changed his name to Peter, Peter never knew that he was going to preach, you know, at the Pentecost. This is a man who had his doubts. He talks a lot. He is the one who was there saying, oh God, I would, Jesus, I will never leave you. I will never betray you. But we know his mouth runs so much. It was Peter who preached at the Pentecost that day. It was this same Peter who gave his life for the gospel. Because we know his history that he was crucified upside down. It was this same Peter who wrote two epistles. And he named it First Peter and Second Peter. It wasn't Simon. Because Simon was still looking after his nets. When Peter got into that, when Jesus got into that boat, he never asked for permission. He never asked for permission. How did he know? He just stepped into the boat and asked him to, to row ashore. Now, if we look at Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26 to 27, the Bible said that God said, let us make man in our own image. I want you to hold that word, us, and our. 
But where I'm going is where he says, and God made man in his image and gave him a breath. God borrowed man a breath. And the moment Jesus entered into that boat, the boat was borrowed. Everything about that day, Jesus borrowed it. The bread was borrowed. Everything Simon had, Jesus took over. Jesus stepped into that boat and told him to drive off. When man was made, he was given a bread that wasn't his. And the Bible said, let all things that have bread praise the Lord. Because we are now using the bread of God. We have that potential. Because this is God's own bread. We have the potential to move from who we are, the flesh, to who God wants us to be. To mirror God in whatever we are doing. In life, you have the potential to be Peter. But sometimes you act like Simon. You know, there's a Simon in the inside of every one of us. There's this Simon who belittles him. You, in the inside of you. There's this Simon who never keeps quiet. Simon was a talkative. No wonder Jesus said, upon this rock will I build my church. Because he had great one in talking. He was this same one who, the moment um, the soldiers came, he took his knife and cut off an ear. He was so emotional. The Simon inside of us doubts a lot. The Simon inside of us is always the one who is forced to jump into actions. In John chapter 18, verse 10, we saw where Peter cut off air. It was this same Simon that denied Christ three times, as we can see in John chapter 18, verse 17. We can also see the denial in Matthew chapter 26, verse 69. Mark chapter 14, verse 66, and in Luke chapter 22, verse 58. But it was still the same Simon when he was now named Peter that walked on water. But when Simon in the inside of Peter showed up, he started sinking. He called out to Jesus to save him. So sometimes we should just tell the Simon inside us who shut up and let Peter talk. So the Simon inside of us is the one that always wants to pull us down. But in Luke chapter 22, it shows us that God knows how to pull Peter out of Simon. It shows us that God knows how to put, pull the baby out of you into the mature you. Sometimes people tell you to do you. Ah, if it's not working, just do you. Just be yourself. Just be who you are. But the truth is this. Who are you? Do you know who you are? Are you Simon or are you Peter? Is it the version of Simon that you're going to do? Or is it the version of Peter that you're going to do? So deep inside you, there's a purpose that you were created for. Simon's purpose wasn't just to be a fisherman. Though he kept going back to fishing. After the death of Jesus, he went back to fishing. So ask yourself, God, what do you see in me? What did Jesus see in Simon that made him to go into that boat? What did Jesus see in Simon that made him to tell him, out of the whole boat there, move, let's go. God, what do you see in me? You know, the good thing is that when God gives you a nod, he doesn't need anybody's, anybody's permission. God, Jesus gave him a nod, let's go. And he entered and followed him. He got in the boat, even before action. But the good thing is that Jesus had to die for Peter. For Simon to transform into Peter. If Jesus was still on earth, Simon would still have been Simon. 
It was when Jesus left, the day of the Pentecost, that the real Simon manifested into Peter. And Peter was bold enough to talk, speak in the presence of a lot of people, and many people came to the knowledge of Christ on one single day. Jesus prayed for Simon, not just Peter. Jesus still knows the real us because inside the boat, Jesus knew that Simon was there, Peter was there. Inside us, on a daily basis, Jesus knows the real you and the one you show people. And he wants the real you to manifest. That real you is the one beneath the surface. Jesus knew Simon was still there when he was arrested. But what did he do? He prayed for Peter. If you look at when Jesus was arrested, Simon took the knife and cut off the neck, the ear. But Jesus prayed for Peter. Jesus prayed for Peter. Jesus did not say Simon. He prayed for Peter. And one of the most intriguing thing was that Jesus knew what was under that boat. The boat was parked somewhere. And if we can look at it from a perspective, Jesus was still speaking to people. But the crowd was so much, he had to say, move a little bit back so that he can speak to the people. So they weren't so far away from the shore. It is that same shore, that same area, I believe was where Simon was washing his net. So they didn't move far into the deep waters that you say, okay, maybe the fishes traveled out and we are coming back in the evening. No, Jesus knew something was under that boat. Jesus knows our flesh, the Simon part of us, that part that prefers everything. Jesus also knows the spirit, the Peter part of us. For sometimes we allow the Simon to take over. Simon and Peter were in the same boat. They owe the same boat. But Jesus got into the one belonging to Simon. Our whole being is us. But what Jesus wants to do to you this morning, do with you this morning, is to bring out the Peter in you. The Peter, the one that sticks closer. The Peter, the one that understands leadership. The Peter, the one that understands how to take. The one that he says from now onwards, you're going to be a fisher of men, not just fishes. And Jesus did this near the water to show the real him deep down inside. The real you deep down inside you. He did it near the water so that he can show people, Simon that there is a Peter inside him that he has not tapped. There's a Peter inside him he has not opened. That despite our mistakes, despite our thoughts, despite everything we have put inside of us, that if we let down our net and allow him to pull us, to pull the real us out from the waters. He told Simon, lay down your net here. The real Simon still said, we have not caught anything. We've tried here. We've put Alexia. We've put Alexia. You know, by nautical calculation, we cannot get anything from here. By our calculation, we've been at home for two years. Now they say Omicron is there. Omicron is this. We have, they've blocked everywhere. By our calculation, we've thought for two years, nothing is coming. I cannot dip my hand, legs into here again. I cannot go here. I cannot go here. They've canceled everything. But God sees something in the inside of him. Just because there were no fishes there throughout the whole night, doesn't mean there is nothing there. Just because we've tried every angle, we've tried our hands in every kind of business known to man, 
We've tried our hearts in every kind of thing known to man. Just because we failed. Just because you lost money. Just because you lost your mind. Just because the doors have been closed doesn't mean that there's nothing there. So from now onwards, I want you to fish on purpose. I want you to look at who has told you to put your net. If you trust God, when he says, lay down your net, that he's ready to pull the real you out, that he's ready to open the doors that no man can close. From now onwards, I want you to fish on purpose. Simon was scared of the blessing he just got. When he, they started pulling that, their nets were breaking. They had to call for backup. And when the backup came, they filled their boats. Their boats were sinking. They got high quality problem. Their, and I believe those were not little fishes. They were good fishes. They were good fishes. He was afraid of the blessing. That was when he realized himself and said, depart from me. I'm a sinful person. Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Now, today's date, we, we just went five miles into the month of December. We still have many days to go before the end of December. And in January, most of us are going to be washing our nets. We are going to be washing our nets. In fact, by the end of December, we are washing our nets, waiting for 1st of December, January to start our yearly ritual of, I will do this, I will not do this, I will do this, I will not do this. And after the first week, I will do this, I will not do this, and the records start breaking down. Simon was scared of the blessing he just got. As the new year is upon us, is the Peter inside of you ready? Or is the Simon still trying to pull him back? Now, I don't know if you have a pen and a paper on you. I don't know if you have your net you're trying to wash. But I know that you have a boat. Everyone here has a boat. And one of your boats is your mobile phone. So I want you to pick up your mobile phone now. If you have, you can type it as a note. You can type it as an email and email it to yourself. I want to give us an assignment this morning. Peter planned, Simon planned his day. He planned his day. I, I, I wanted to give this assignment last time, but because of time. So uh, with little time that I have, let's... Let's just rush it. Peter, uh, Simon planned his day. He went fishing. He came back. He was washing his nets so that he can go home and try again the next day. For the past two years, three years, we have been washing our nets. We go out every day. We come back. We wash our nets. So this morning, I want you to, if you have a piece of paper, I want you to draw a line at the middle of it. Draw another line at the middle of it to give you four parts. If you don't have a piece of paper, we are going to make it this way. If you're typing it on your phone, it's going to be one, two, three, four. Now, I call this the four quadrants. Peter planned. Simon planned. He has planned his day. He has planned his month. He has planned everything he wanted to achieve. But he kept on toiling, and nothing was coming. Now, what I want you to do, those four quadrants are the four quarters of the year. I want you to plan for your year. Most of us don't have plans for, if I say, how many of us have a 10-year plan now? It might be one or two people. If I say, how many of us have the plan for one full year? Uh, it might be only one or two people. So let us learn now that Jesus asked Simon to put his net if that net was not ready, he wouldn't have. He was washing the net. If that net was not properly tended to, he wouldn't have pulled it. It would have been the moment he put that net inside the water, 
Because nets, when you put them inside water, they tear because of the struggle with fish, struggle with aquatic materials inside. If he didn't prepare that net, he wouldn't have stepped out to use the net. So what I want you to do this morning is in the first quarter, write down everything you think you can achieve in the first quarter. First quarter is January, February, March, April. The second quarter, write down everything you think you can achieve. Let it be dreams. It can be dreams. It can be what you, you have never dreamt of that it will happen to you. It might be that you want to buy a seven-bedroom. You might be afraid, how will I buy a seven-bedroom in the first quarter of the year? If you don't wash your net, Jesus won't find it to use it. Everything you want to achieve in all of the year, write them down in those four parts. Now, another thing I want you to do after you finish this is to now look at those lists, achievables and the ones you might not be able to achieve. You narrow them down. So in your first quarter, if you have 20 lists, I want you to go back to it, look at them, narrow them down, narrow all of them down, and then the third one, you sieve it again and look at it, Month by month. So you narrow them down to four months. You already have a bigger list for the whole year, for the whole four months. You narrow them down to January, from January 1 to 30, 31st. I want to achieve this. Then you can now decide to, okay, I want to achieve two things in January, two things in February, and so on and so forth. Now I want you to put a date on those last one you've narrowed down. Those dates, I want you to look at it this way. Simon washed his net. Jesus, on that same day, saw those nets and told him to put, launch that, those nets. So I want you to put a date on it. What you're doing right now is that you are not just provoking God, but you're getting ready for it. You're planning towards it. Now, on 31st, which is our traditional day of praying for the next year, when you're praying, you're not praying with empty hand. So you start from now as you're preparing this. This can take you the whole week. As you're preparing for this, I want you to every day make this point of your prayer. If you don't pray every day, I want you to start it this morning. Set an alarm on your phone, praying for my net. Praying for my net. Praying for washing my net. I need you to set an alarm so that you remember this in prayer. Pray with those dates in mind. Pray with those dates in mind. If you don't achieve it that month, transfer it to the next month. But it's going to be a practical year because Simon had a practical aspect to his life. Washing his net. Preparing those nets for the next day. So if you have never prepared for the next year. I want you to start now, not on 31st, not on 1st, when we are talking about a new year resolution. I want you to start from today to resolve in your mind to every day clean your net. You don't know when Jesus will step into your boat. You don't know when Jesus will decide that this boat is the one I want to go. That this thing you've planned for this month is the one I want to achieve. That this thing is the one I want people to help you achieve. Because if you prepare your boat, we prayed for how many months for, for God to send men to us right now. God is telling you that he knows there is Simon inside you, but he wants Peter to arise. Jesus is saying, just as you, you are mending your net, I want to mend you. You've toyed all year. For two years now, many people sitting at home, many people doing everything possible to stay above board, and we caught nothing. My question is, won't you allow Jesus to tell you where to cast your net? And if you're listening to this wherever you are, 
If you didn't get all those, I want you to go back and rewatch and do that, believing that today Jesus will step into your boat. And the good thing about being a Christian is that when Jesus steps into your boat, he leaves the Holy Spirit with you to continue on that journey. So if you've not given your life to Christ, this morning it's just a very simple decision to make. I just want to invite you this morning to give your life to Christ. Because Jesus left the Holy Spirit to be our friend, to be our guide, to be our comforter. It is only through the power of the Holy Spirit that you can enjoy the benefits of Jesus stepping into your boat. So this morning, I want you to pray a very simple prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new. Take over my life and let your Holy Spirit dwell in me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Can we just appreciate um, for our lovely ones again? Thank you very much, sir. God bless you, sir. Um, can we, in our usual way, just uh, say a word of prayer for Brother Lovely? Let's just stretch forth our hands towards him. And let's just speak a word of blessing over him this morning, over his life, over his family, over his business, over his career, over everything that concerns him, over his marriage, over his health. Let's just pray and say, Father, we commit your son unto your hands. As he has, as he has dedicated himself, as he has offered himself for service, Lord God, as he has come into the house of God to do the work of God, Father, Lord God, we pray that you also will take care of his home, of his family, of his business, of his career, in the name of Jesus. And we want to pray for him, especially this morning, concerning the message that has come forth, that, Lord God, that the Peter will come out from him in the name of Jesus, that as he has offered himself for service, that he himself will receive a net-breaking cash in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, we thank you for your son. And you continue to use him for your glory. And you continue to lift him up from glory to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover his life with the blood of Jesus. Cover his home, his family, his marriage with the precious blood of Jesus. That it shall be well with him. Whenever we hear from him concerning him, it will be good, good news always in the mighty name of Jesus. And he will never regret accepting your call upon his life. He will never regret serving you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah.